Um, yeah, they do. There was no sound though, so I, I couldn't hear what anyone was saying. But the, but the, they did. So a couple of folks in this class were were found in there. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Anna, Zenobia, um, and one other person was just in the background. You could oh, see. When yeah, when the TV people were here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's see. I have a feeling, you know, um, engineering. They get to like stand in front of big machines and press buttons and turn dials and all that, and that looks more exciting than someone sitting there. That so they did show those students uh, uh, as well, may, perhaps a little more. But hey, what the heck? Without software, nothing happens, all right? Um, so uh, our, our task for the last couple weeks, and we sprinkled in a few other things, but our big, our, our big task for the last few weeks, and it will probably go into next week even, is to talk about using CSS to um, address the layout of our page, all right? Because we don't necessarily want it in the default layout, which I call the flow layout, where just one block element flows in after the other. We want to take some control about that. And we want to do that again to help our user organize the page and, and set some things apart, set the navigation off to the side. Because otherwise, things just sort of get caught up in one flow. It's easy to miss something that's important. So by controlling the layout, it's not purely just a matter of it looks better, although I, I think it does. But you can, you can actually help the user uh, understand your page simply by the design of it and gaps that you put in and, and so on and so forth. So we developed a template last time um, and completed CSS, and I was reasonably happy with it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create different versions of this template, all right, different versions, actually not of the template, but of the full-blown site, different versions of the site by only changing the CSS with one little catch. One little catch is for some of the versions, I will make a tiny little HTML change. Uh, I could have put it in the original template, but I didn't want to muddy the waters at that point. So I'll make a tiny HTML change at some point. All right. But other than that, we're going to be editing uh, only the CSS file. So since Zen Garden has already been taken, this will be our CSS vegetable garden. All right. And that worked out good. I don't know. I don't know if you were thinking of that, but you know, I, I'm going to use that from now on. All right. I also changed the wallpaper and cleaned up the desktop because I don't like a untidy desktop, and I got tired of the Teletubby scene. Uh, so we'll we'll look at Stonehenge for a while. No, it just the screen. The screen's not up. It, it just oh, it, the classic Windows wallpaper. Yeah, this one, uh, the, no, it looks like the Teletubbies. Oh, Teletubbies are awesome, right? That looks like the field that they run in. One of my favorite videos on YouTube, by the way, is a video called the Teletubbies uh, uh, pay tribute to Derek Bailey. Uh, Derek Bailey was a British guitarist that, most people say play noise. If you don't like him, you, you think that he doesn't know what he's doing and he's just playing noise. But he is a very noisy kind of guitar player. He, he's an older fellow that passed away a few years back. But anyhow, it just shows them running around just making noise on their guitar. And it's a Teletubbies tribute to Derek Bailey. So uh, I can't guarantee extra credit if you incorporate that on a web page, but it couldn't hurt, right? All right. So at any rate, we're sick of the Teletubbies. We're getting rid of them. And we're going back to Stonehenge. I just, I just heard a interesting thing that Stonehenge might actually been created to amplify the sound as well. In addition to all the things about the planet, supposedly the lineup helps amplify the sound as well. I have no idea. Frankly, uh, I think that, that ancient people just did a lot of things to mess with us. They figured that. At some point in the future, people are going to look at this and say, what were they thinking there? And, and they'll have a good time. Or if anyone watches the Ancient Astronaut Show on History Channel, no, I'm the only one, right? <laughs> yeah, you got to see that show. It, you know, anything that it is all mysterious about the past, 
this ancient aliens, they did that. They came down from space and they put those rocks up in place right there, you know. So anything that is remotely mysterious. And there's a guy whose hair stands straight up, who's always on the show and he's always uh, doing that. And really, uh, <laughs> you know, if my hair looked like that, maybe I would think uh, that aliens had a, a play in the, the world as well. At any rate, yeah, probably. <laughs> So I guess that's it for today. I will see you. No, no, no. <laughs> right. Really? Yeah, the aliens. It, 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 it wants, he wants to go back home, right? And his hair is leading the charge, right? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. It's one of those things that, like, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I'm looking. I got a lot of stuff to grade. But, well, let's see us on TV, all right? <laughs> well, nothing on this channel, nothing on this channel. Ooh, ancient aliens. That could be good. <laughs> all right, at any rate, here's our original uh, template uh, that we did. Not, not template, but full-blown site. And as you notice, we can click around and do that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a totally different version of this. And for this version, I'm only going to change the CSS file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and copy this folder. And, you know, I'll put a 2 behind it for the second one. All right. Now, here's a wireframe that I want to implement on this. Remember, the whole, whole uh, gist of this exercise was implementing a wireframe. And the first wireframe that we implemented looked like this. Which is sort of a pretty standard one, especially when you're talking about smaller sites. The first wireframe we implemented looked like this. We had a banner. We had a navigation. We had a content area. And then at the bottom of the content area, we had a copyright message. So that's the first wireframe that we did, that, that we've already implemented. The one we're going to implement now is going to look like this. A banner. We're going to stretch the navigation underneath the banner. Content area. And then finally, copyright message. All right? So we can do that without touching the uh, HTML. And in addition, I'll, I'll make some other superficial changes, like change the font and change the colors and, and that sort of thing. All right? So let's go and, and do that. Let's first of all go and look for um, some good, let's look for a good background pattern. I feel like a background pattern today. So, yes, I did. I am, I am, uh, uh, I've become paranoid about typing the wrong thing in the address bar and ending up on a site that I didn't intend to or, or typing something wrong in a search and entering something. So a lot of times if I am not sure, I will turn off the screen and that way I can avoid uh, embarrassment. I'm, it's never happened in front of class. I've never done that in front of class. I have had that, you know, in my own personal life. If, if you misspell Google or whatever, you know, you go to some other other site. All right. Let's go and let's find a nice Creative Commons licensed vegetable picture. Give me a second. All right. 
Here's a nice background image that we're going to use. All right, we'll make that our background images. These are vegetable for Irish stew. I would never eat this. Why not? It has onions in it. Thank you. That's clearly not correct. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They taste like onions. So I will go and I will save this as bg.jpg for background. And I will remember to grab this so that I can paste it on my page. Um, all right. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to put that the background I'm going to give a URL of bg.jpg. All right. And I'm going to put a comment in the CSS to indicate that that's where I got the background image. I would say that's an acceptable way of citing it as well. Um, a comment is where you can put a line of code in that um, doesn't do anything, but it serves as explanation. I'm just going to make sure that I did the syntax right for CSS comments. Yep. All right. So I'll make that background. Now, one thing that's drawn on this diagram, on the wireframe, is that we want the banner to go all the way across. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of using an absolute number, like 700 pixels, um, I'm going to make it be 100% uh, of the width of the screen. All right? So I will say the banner I want to be have a width of 100%. Font family. Um, let's go with a different look. So let's go, let's actually just switch these two around. Okay, thanks. So we'll switch those two around. We'll, we'll, we'll make the headlines sans serif and we'll make the text serif. Even though that's not necessarily optimal, that'll be a nice, uh, nice way that we can quickly do this. All right, I'm going to make the navigation have a width of 100%. I'm going to remove any of the positioning from this because this one, if we look at the wireframe, I sort of just want to do the basic flow stuff. So I'll go and I'll make that a width of 100%, make this a width of 100%. And so on. Now let's take a look. All right. Well, a couple things wrong with this. First of all, we're not seeing our nice picture. Second of all, um, I don't really like the, the green now, right? Because the green sort of clashes with the blue uh, in, in, in the picture, all right? So I'm going to um, change the background colors of those, all right? And I am going to um, change the orientation of the links, all right? The links are stacked vertically. All right, I don't want them to be stacked vertically now. I want them to extend going across. So I will want to change the orientation of the links. So let's go in and let's keep things simple to start. And let's make everything on the page have a background of white. And then we can go back and maybe change that later. Let's see how this looks. Uh, 
Um, I could go in then and um, let's see what this looks like, the banner looks like, if I remove the background color altogether. In other words, if I have the background right on, if I have the text right on the background image. All right. Not bad. That might be a little hard to read. Um, if I were to make this white, I probably would also ha uh, be hard to read, right? Because the white wouldn't show up good uh, against the onion. See, again, those onions get you in trouble. Make it yellow just for, for last. Or let's make it the color of a carrot. Let's make it orange. All right. Just, just for last. Now. I could guess at orange. What is orange? Orange is a mix of, of red and yellow. All right. What are our three color choices? Well, red, blue, and green. No yellow in there. What makes yellow in our RGB? This isn't necessarily intuitive, but it does. Red and green. Right? So red and green make yellow, and red makes red. So what would a shade of orange be? It would be something with red and green and no blue, and something where the red is higher than the green. So I can take a guess at this even without, um, even without actually going to a chart. I'm going to show you another shortcut that you can do as well. So I'll say background of pound sign. I don't want background. I want color. I want the, the words to be this color. So color, I'll make pound FFCC00. We'll see what that looks like. All right. Well, not bad. I might want it a little redder or a little less green. I want it to really look like that carrot. Now, a couple things I could do. I could go search the web and find and then try to match up the carrot. I could play around with it. I'm thinking if I lowered the green number, it would get closer to what I want. Or I can do this trick, and you can do it in almost any um, image editor. I'm going to go and edit this image. Open with paint. And one thing that we have is we have a little eyedropper. And that eyedropper will suck the color up off the picture. Yeah, I want to, I want to go to then colors, edit colors, find custom colors. Thank you. All right, and there it is. There's that shade of orange. All right, that I had sucked up in there. That's a little dark. Let's try, let's try moving our cursor a little bit. So I'll go and I'll hit. I get. All right, let's say that's the orange I want. Go to colors, edit colors, define custom colors, and it tells us what this is. Unfortunately, it doesn't use the hex syntax, but it does use a syntax that we can use, that RGB, red, green, and, and blue. So I can go in here and say the color is, instead of saying pound sign something, I can say RGB and then put those three numbers in there that I get from here. And they are 204, 119, and 52. 204, 19, and 52. 119, yeah, that didn't sound right. 119 and 52. All right, now I'll go here and I'll refresh and do a little bit, again, the point is, is we can take the color off of it and, and make it match. And if we want to make it a little lighter, we can make it lighter. Yes. Or, yeah. Or we can make all the numbers higher. That would make it brighter. Um, actually, no. Actually, removing, removing that will not make it brighter. It will make it more orangey, but it won't make it brighter. All right. If we do that, then. Oh, 
don't really, I don't really see much of a difference. Yeah, and that, that's probably it. Because again, you, you don't make it brighter by like taking out a color. You'll make it more reddish, orangey, and less grayish, but it'll still be in there. Bottom line is that's another technique to get a color using the, the dropper in, in any uh, image um, thing. So um, the other thing I can do again is I can dial these up a little bit. And let's make this 224 and 139. All right, made it a little brighter. All right. Remember, the higher the number, the more the light. Now, in this notation, the numbers can be anywhere from 0 to 255. All right. So that's why, if you notice, the red is the strongest of all of them, the, the green is the second strongest, and there's a little bit of blue in there. All right. Now, um, let's see what else. Um, Still not 100% satisfied, but we'll pretend that we are. All right. Uh, now, I want to make these links oriented horizontally. All right. How can I do that? Does anyone recall how I can make something be oriented horizontally instead of oriented vertically? Pardon me? Yes, I have to make it in line. So what I do is I specify the display as in line for that. What am I going to put that on? What is it that I want to make look? The nav UL? The div? The nav LI, right. In other words, it's the list items that are on each separate line, right? The list items are on each separate line. These are the things that we want to go across. These are in LIs, so we make the list item be in LIs. Uh, or they already are in allies, I can go and make those um, put display of inline dash block, which again is sort of a hybrid, right? Um, it will take some of the characteristics from inline, some of the characteristics from block. So now we have it going that way. Well, I don't like that, right? I want to go and, and maybe extend that um, further and put some more separation there. So what I can do is how do I get more separation? I used to have a margin top. Let's get rid of the margin top and let's put a margin left. So there's a margin to the left of everything. Or actually, let's do margin right. And let's make it a bigger number. So let's do 80. All right. It's getting to be more of, of how I want it to be. Um, and then I can go from there. Maybe I don't want it to be 100%. Maybe I only want it to be um, 80%. I could go and change that. And for good measure, I'll change the content area as well. All right. Um, other things that we could do. Let's see what happens if we take Let's try to make these look like buttons that sit on top of the image. All right? So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the background color on the nav. All right? All right, that isn't particularly good, right? So I want to put a background color based on the LI. I could do that. What if instead I wanted to actually make it look like a real button? All right, see if Google can help us with this. Google can help us with almost everything. Let's see if it can help us with this. Look, here's a button maker. Yeah, I was going to say, one of the button makers is if my shirt loses a button. Fortunately, I think I'm OK here. This, though, is a free web button maker. 
and we can go in and we can pick some sort of button that we like. Um, yeah, I like this free one. So let's go and click that. And thing is this right here the image now in this case it is appropriate to hot link to this image because they're allowing us to do that all right so that's not an issue other cases they actually um, they actually um, um, do that. And it says I, I must put a link back to button generator somewhere on my website. So I'll go and I'll, I'll do that. I'll make that, that change to the home page. So let me go and copy this. Actually, I want to copy this. Let's go here under LIs and say background URL. Then I can put the URL that I copied there. And I can say height of 31 width of 88. And there we go. And oh, that is horrible. <laughs> so we go to plan B. Yeah, right. Yeah, let's go to CSS tricks. Look at this. No, it isn't. Um, yes, it is, yes, there is, but it is um, not in, um, it, it's in um, CSS3. So therefore, that's not something that's, that's necessarily supported source and repeat that please I'll view the CSS duh <laughs> Copy this. And now, notice what it did as dot button. We haven't seen a dot before, right? We've seen HTML tags and we've seen IDs. We haven't seen dot something. A dot refers to a class. All right, we haven't talked about classes yet, but now's as good a time as any. All right, um, a class relates to um, when there are several items on the page that we want to treat a certain way. We can assign them a class. The question I get from students a lot is, what's the difference between an ID and a class? Because you can do the same thing with an ID, right? You can assign an ID to something and it will get a style, or you can assign a class to something and get a style. With a class, you can have more than one thing on the page that has that class. With an ID, you should only have one thing on the page that gets that ID. All right? So I can go in, actually, 
And unfortunately, this will require an HTML change. We'll do it on just one of the pages just to demonstrate. I can go here and say class equals button. All right. And then go in and Whoa. I, I still have that old, old stuff in, in my CSS. Yeah, let's go in and whack that. Thanks. All right, there's our button. A lot better. All right, and I could do that to all the buttons on the page and get that behavior. Now again, unfortunately, this requires an HTML change. So if I wanted to do this, it would have been good for me to have done this in advance. Actually, this doesn't require an HTML change because I could just go and incorporate that in the style rule for. Um, for uh, nav ul li's, or nav li's. I could have just said, and that should work. So I can keep my promise of not having changed the CSS. All right. Now that bumps it down into two lines, right? Uh, but I can take care of that by adjusting the margin. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the margin. Um, yeah, I have it as 80 now. I can go and set that to maybe something smaller. Let's try 20 and so on. All right, and there it looks like that. Now I'm, you know, I could tweak the colors to look a little bit better. All right, uh, but I'm not sure that would really be of any benefit. You get the idea, all right? Now, the biggest lesson that I want to show here isn't necessarily about that we can find a website to generate cool buttons or, or anything like that. The point is, is that we can make this page look wildly different than the other version, all right? So with a little bit of time, we could, we could tweak the colors on the buttons, we could tweak the colors on the, on the banner and do some things. Um, Maybe make the border different on some things. Maybe make the border um, bigger. Let's do 10 pixel white solid. And we can really end up with a, with a uh, page that looks radically different than, than what we had before, all by using uh, CSS. Now, the one thing that you did notice is I use relative um, uh, sizes rather than absolute sizes. In other words, I didn't say 700 pixels. I said 80% or 100% or whatever. That has the advantage then is it will conform to the size of your page. Now, I don't necessarily like the fact that those buttons drop down like that. I would like the buttons to stay on the same line no matter how big it is. So what I can do is I can go and I can mix and match. I can give those an absolute width, um, something like maybe a width of 600 pixels and, okay, try 700 pixels. And I can keep the other things at a percentage so that they resize themselves. So the navigation stays that size, but as I get smaller, it just gets cut off, and I can scroll. No, I do not have position absolute on this. I don't. I'm not saying the position any uh, any way at all. I'm just using the flow going down. All right. Yes. Yes. 
No. No. Why don't we get to see it? Well, if I made the width 100%, the width is going to be 100% of the available space that's that big, then I add my margin, and padding, and border to it, it actually, that, this is actually going to end up taking more than 100%, right? Because I have, I, I, I am adding the border to that. So if I want it to be a box, I'd have to like make it at something like 95%. That way, that'll bring that in a little bit. So I could go and do this, 95%. And bring it in. And there we see that way. Let's go. It is funny, even though I know this is just for demonstration purposes, it does bug me the fact that that text is a little hard to read. So I'll go in and I'll put a background of white on that. Can we? All right, how do we do that? OK. <laughs> but you do know something, right? You know that it's going to be done via CSS, OK? Uh, because that's the appearance. All right, that has nothing to do with the content. It has nothing to do with what you're linking to or what the text is. It's just the way that the link looks, OK? So I guess. Whenever you're trying to do this, you know, the first thing to assess is where I'm going to make the change. And I'm going to make the change in CSS. As it turns out, we could go and look it up. There is a text decoration property. And one of the, uh, one of the properties is you can make it underlined. Uh, you can make strike throughs and all that kind of thing. If I say text decoration none, that will get rid of the underlines. And let's go in and let's make let's make the colors of these links different or, or the text different. Make them white so they really stand out. All right. And notice now that the underlines are not there. Um, we can go in and make um, let's make this a more vivid red. So it really stands out. And let's make the hover color on this black. All right. Okay. So we now have two web pages that are the same HTML. I went and undid any changes I was losing my head about and almost making to the HTML, right? And I did it all via CSS. Um, I took and adapted the code. And now, now actually, I have two style rules for NavLi. Uh, it's probably not a good idea. For any other reason, it would just be confusing. So I'm going to combine the two in the one. All right. Let's look at this in Internet Explorer. Oh, interesting. I see a browser compatibility issue. <laughs> All right. Let's attempt to resolve this. Yeah, I'm trying to see where it is getting a width. I do I have a width this defined? I think I do. Let's go and explicitly make the width. All right. That didn't have the desired effect. Mm 
vertical line. That, that, yeah. Um, uh, that is a good question. Try that. All right. There we go. Still slightly different. We could go and put, put, yeah, put a little padding or margin on the UL, let's say. Margin top 20 pixels. And let's see what that does for us. All right. All right. And while they might not be identical, they look similar enough. All right. We still have the issue with the, the height of that, which, you know, um, I'm not necessarily going to worry about. But, yeah, that, that's because this is using, this particular example is using some CSS3 features that aren't implemented, at least not in this version of uh, Internet Explorer. But again, notice that, that's why I'm saying that, that, yes, it's a browser compatibility issue, but it's not a big deal. Yes, I think the round corners look better, all right? And they're not round on Internet Explorer. Well, it's still workable. It's not ugly, all right? It, it still works and so on. Therefore, this would be a browser compatibility issue that I wouldn't be overly concerned about. Um, the, the, the term that people often use for something like this is they say that the code degrades gracefully, all right? It's kind of fancy language, and what it means is when you're running it on a browser that doesn't support it, it doesn't just go completely bonkers, <laughs> all right? It, it, it gracefully works in the lower version of the browser when you lower the, the level of the browser and the, 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 the support of the browser. It at least is workable. So now we have two versions of this. All right? Um, both, uh, um, and, and if you notice that one of them has a little bit more flexibility in it in the sense that as we resize this window, the banner and content get a little smaller. All right, notice that the, you know, if, here, if we take it all the way down, notice that now the banner wraps and this paragraph wraps. And if we had more text, you know, it would be even more dramatic. Um, this as opposed to our first site, which it didn't matter what we did, it didn't move. All right, our window is this big, our window is that big, those things don't move, all right? Informally, we can describe websites three, of, uh, three different ways, depending on how much they move when you resize the window, all right? And these aren't formal definitions or anything, these are more descriptive terms. Um, Ice means everything is fixed, absolute positioning. That get, that's nailed down, all right? That's nailed down in place like our first example. doesn't matter what we do as far as resizing it. Everything has an absolute position. Everything has an absolute size, so it doesn't budge. We can describe a site as being jello, which means that at least some things are relative. And there's a couple of different ways that we can make it. This is the, the second example we have would be an example of a jello layout, because as we make it bigger and smaller, that Content and banner section resize themselves a little bit. Stuff doesn't rearrange, all right, to any great degree. But it, it you know, just like je Jello isn't like ice. You know, ice is fixed. If you poke an ice cube, it doesn't do anything. If you poke some Jello, it's going to wiggle a little bit. 
Same idea here. That web layout wiggles a little bit. It changes a little bit as you make your window bigger and smaller. On the other end of the extreme is liquid. And liquid, you know, a liquid conforms to the shape of the container completely. In other words, what shape is my coffee? My coffee is in the shape of the cup, right? If I were to pour it in a thermos, it would no longer be shaped like my cup, it would be shaped like my thermos. So liquid is everything is much more relative and it involves what's called floating positions. All right, so that the page sort of conforms itself to the size of the container uh, more completely. Now again, one thing to remember about this, or a couple things to remember about this, is first of all, these aren't like official terms. These are more descriptive terms. Uh, I heard someone use them. You know, these aren't my invention. I heard someone use them, and I thought it made sense, you know, and it stuck. So I continue to use them, all right? The other thing is if, if I describe it one way or another, it's not a value judgment. It's not as though fixed position sites are better than jello sites or vice versa. It's the case of the right tool for the right job. If I want a very precise layout that is fixed and I is very intricate, like perhaps some of the ones on the CSS Zen Garden, if that's my aim, then a fixed layout might do the trick. If I want a site that is maybe more uh, malleable so that if I'm viewing it on a phone, it does one thing. If I'm viewing it in a browser, it does something else then maybe I want a more liquid layout. Um, uh huh. You can still move around, right. And you'd, you'd have to decide, is that, is that a big deal? You know, depending on the site and depending on what you expect your users are going to be visiting on the mobile version of the site, you can then make that judgment call. The one nice thing, though, is as we, can, as we see, we can take one page and apply several different styles to it. What this is going to lead to at some point is we could actually have one web page that gets one style if it's being viewed on a desktop browser, another style if it's being viewed on a mobile device. So we can get the best of both worlds. All right. Fixed, we pretty well covered. I mean, that's about as tough as fixed gets. You can have more stuff. All right, but the more stuff you add, it's still fixed. You glue it down, you fix the size. We're going to spend a little more time next week on some jello layouts where things move around on the page a bit, but don't totally collapse, and then we'll spend a little bit of time on, on uh, liquid layouts. So we'll continue with this, and we'll see all the different ways you can make things liquidy or jello-y and allow for some moving around of stuff as you resize stuff. All right. Any questions on this? Um, I will post these examples. Um, the one thing that um, you can do, again, getting back to the buttons, is if you do have a background image for a button, or if you even draw one, you can use that background image to make it look even more buttony if you want. But, again, especially with CSS3, there's so much that you can do in CSS that sort of the first option is to try to do it via CSS. And if that fails, well, then maybe you look and look at buttons. If you want buttons that hop around and dance like that, those animated GIFs did, then you go for that kind of thing. All right. We'll see you over in lab.